All right, friends. Last week when we did our Zoom session, we did magical castle drawings inspired by the artist Paul Clay and his painting called Castle in the Sun that is, has so many bright shapes and colors. Um, a beautiful bright orange sun in the background you guys and you many of you did such a wonderful job um, creating your own magical castles we're still going to focus on Paul Clay but what we're going to focus on today are his underwater seascape drawings and paintings because he did quite a few of them and I think they're very very interesting this one is called Sinbad the Sailor, which is based off of an old folk tale. And here you have Sinbad in his boat, and it looks like he has this giant spear trying to defeat these kind of sea serpents that are attacking him. This one almost looks like a giant e eel, maybe a sea lion. This one almost looks like an angler fish. fish. Another one of his very magical underwater paintings is called fish magic and there's I think it, it is there you go it's called magical because there's all kinds of things that are kind of realistic and kind of not so you have these really cool colorful fish but then you have looks like all of the, these planets and solar systems in the background there's a daisy a vase of flowers this looks like a two-headed figure here and then another figure with a pointy pointy hat. It looks like almost like a party hat that he's wearing. So very, very interesting underwater painting he did. And then another one, this one's called Goldfish. And this one's a little more realistic. He liked to experiment with doing chalk, using chalk, watercolors, oil paints. And this one, it looks like he scratched into the surface of the paint to create all these cool kind of textures of waves and underwater plants. So, what you need for our Paul Clay underwater inspired activity is the following. You are going to need two sheets of white paper. You are going to need some crayons and you're going to need some markers. And then a little later on as a choice, um, you might want to use a cup of water and a paintbrush. We're not using paint, but we're going to turn our marker into paint. You're going to see how that's going to work for this underwater project. Now, to get started, we're going to just put one of our sheets of paper aside because we're going to that's going to be the second half of our underwater activity. And we're going to just focus on one sheet. And to inspire me, I am going to put the picture of fish magic and what I'd like you to do is use crayons to draw all kinds of oops upside down to draw all kinds of amazing things it could be realistic it could be non-realistic um, for your underwater scene I don't want you coloring in the water yet so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use crayons to draw all the objects in our water and then we're gonna use markers to color in our water. So I want you to start with crayons. You don't wanna draw your fish out of markers for this activity, because when we add water to the fish, they're gonna, it would get all blurry. But the nice thing about crayons that we know is we're gonna form a resist. So when you paint over a crayon, you know it's made out of wax and that way the crayon drawing is still going to look the same underneath and that's what we want we don't want it to look blurry all right so i'm thinking of using some bright warm colors for my fish because i think they'll be more glowing in my water and basic fish i just do an oval with a triangle but you can do sea serpents you can do sharks you can do octopus jellyfish whatever you want to do is cool with me and like Paul Clay you might want to add some magical creatures I am going to add a bright pink jellyfish in my water and you want to color pretty hard press pretty hard as well because 
again since we're going to add a little bit of marker paint in the background we want um, the crayon to really show up and I'm going to give my jellyfish a definitely kind of a funny face looks like he's singing and I'm thinking of the party hat in fish magic here so I'm actually going to give my jellyfish a funny party hat as well why not it's actually gonna be all kinds of different colors in it I'm gonna add some more brightly colored fish this one is going to be kind of an octopus friends so here are some of my magical creatures I have my jellyfish wearing a party hat I have a whale spouting out some water out of his blowhole I have a rainbow striped fish an octopus with um, on his tentacles I put those little kind of circular discs the little sucker patches to help the grippers that they have and I have a pink and black spotted baby fish oh yeah and a blue and orange striped fish. I'm going to add one more fin to that fish and then I'm going to show you what we are going to do next. Okay, now we're going to put our crayons away and you're going to take your markers and you're going to fill in your background using markers. Now, in order for our colors to blend nicely when we add water to our markers, we want to keep our cool colors separate from our warm colors because when we go across the wheel, sometimes when our colors mix, they turn brown. So, for my water, I'm going to add some greens and blues. You could even use some purples if you want. And then up here for your sky, this could be all water. But I'm thinking for my sky, I'm going to add warms like yellows and oranges. Okay, so I'll start with my sky. And for this, because we are blocking out the whole background with marker, I like to use the side of the marker. And as you see, that helps me to kind of black out and color in my background a little bit easier. And I'm going to overlap with some orange because we know yellow and orange on overlapped on top of each other blends nicely. And then for my water For my water, I'm going to do shades of blue. And what I like to do again using the side of my marker is kind of sketching in waves. And then from there, you can take another shade of blue or green and you go right under that next wave. And actually you can even go right on top of your crayon um, because the crayon, once we add water to it, should resist. And it's actually going to look like our creatures are swimming underwater once we add the water to it. So I'm adding some dark blue. And just kind of filling in those spots with water. Lines for water. Like this lighter green. Okay, 
friends. So I did, I tried to block out all of the areas with um, marker in the background. And again, you can draw right on top um, of your crayon with the marker because the crayon's made out of wax. As you see, that's going to show through. Now comes the fun part. If you have just a cup of water and a paintbrush, you're going to be able to turn your markers into paint. So I'm going to first start at the top, and you don't want to um, you don't want to rip your paper. So I'm going kind of a sweepy motion, kind of gentle, and I'm working my way down. And as I go, you're going to see how your marker colors are going to kind of blend together. It's pretty amazing. And if there's some areas you want to blend a little more, you could go back, after you do one layer, go back into some of those areas again and have the colors really mix and blend so it looks very water-like. And as you see, my sea creatures are really showing through because they're made out of crayon. If I did my sea creatures out of marker, all the marker would kind of blend and bleed. So that's why it's important that you did your sea creatures out of crayon. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and put this aside. Oh, I got a little bit of marker on the table, so you definitely wanna work under maybe like a paper bag or a piece of newspaper. But if that happens like me, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and clean that up. Now, the next step we're gonna do for this project is origami. We're gonna add some origami sailboats to your amazing underwater creation. And when you're done with these, by the time that's done, your seascape picture should be all dry. Okay, now for our sailboats, what you're gonna need is that other sheet of white paper. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to fold it the hot dog way, not the short way, but the long way. Okay, increase it. And when you open it up, you're going to cut right down the middle. Now, for most origami projects, we know we need a square. So we need to turn our rectangle into a square. So what you're going to do is put, take one strip, fold it the side to side way, take one corner and fold it all the way so it matches the other side. So I'm taking that corner and matching it up at the top. Then I'm going to draw a line here. And you see that line? That's the line I'm going to cut to turn it into a square. All right. If you want to make two sailboats for your picture, you just take the extra strip and trace that same square, and then you have two squares the same size. And you have this one too, so you have a total, you can make up to four sailboats for your picture, or just have them for yourself, especially if you like origami. All right, so I'm going to put my paper to the, my extra paper to the side and I'm going to show you how to make a sailboat. All right. So, first step for uh, your origami sailboat is to place your paper like a diamond and take that bottom corner and fold it up to the top. Increase it. Okay. Have your opening up at the top. Then you're going to take each side corner, fold it, take that first right hand corner and you're going to meet it at that top point, just like that. Crease it really good. Then you're going to do the same with this corner. Take that point and meet it all the way at the top.
All right, so now you want to open those flaps a little bit. Kind of looks like two ears here, like a fox's ears. And then this top triangle, you're going to take that top piece, okay, not both of them, but just the one layer, and fold it down to the bottom and crease it. Okay, then I'm going to take my two ear flaps and put them back in place. Crease that back down. And then I'm going to turn my diamond over so it's just the solid side and I'm going to pull up that flap at the bottom okay so I'm just pulling that flap you see there's the two sails right there from those ears bottom flap and meet it at the top and then as you see you turn around you have a little sailboat now I don't want my sailboat bottom to have a point so all I'm going to do kind of bend that corner in look at that and then I have my sailboat and I'm gonna do a second one again placing my paper like a diamond folding it to the top opening at the top taking each of those end flaps and triangles and folding it to the tip tippy top to make another diamond opening up my ears my bunny ears taking the top of that triangle that one layer folding it to that bottom point taking my little ears folding that back up into a diamond flipping it over and again taking that flap that front flap and folding it down and there's my second sailboat I'm going to take that little end point. And there you go. Now I'm going to add some decorations, some designs, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to add it to my picture. My sailboats are now decorated. You kind of could just keep them as is and um, make more, but I think I'm going to add mine to my picture and bring that back. It's nice and dry. Look at that. And then you can decide where you want to put your sailboats. I like to kind of have mine at a little bit of an angle so it looks like they're kind of coasting on the waves. Just take your glue stick. Oh, this glue stick is broken. You know that happens all the time. I gotta throw that one away. Just take your glue stick, put a little glue on the back of your cute little boat, sailboat. Voila, this one I added a rainbow sail with a kitty. And this is my polka dotted boat. I'm overlapping on some of my sea creatures, but that's okay. It's a little more realistic because they're kind of floating underwater. You can even have your sails pop out a bit. I kind of like that. Kind of bending them upright. And here you go. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this underwater sea activity inspired by the artist Paul Clay. A little bit of origami, a little bit of drawing, a little bit of everything in there definitely can use your imagination which of course I love to do and I love to see all of your wonderful imaginative works of art. Make sure you post your amazing creations on Seesaw. Love to see what you make and I hope you have a great week. Bye! Miss you!